Imagine a world where your tattoos are not just ink on skin, but a lifelong commitment, a symbol of an unbreakable bond, where leaving means surgically erasing your past. Stay tuned as we delve into 20 brutal Comanchero rules that are mandatory. In the secretive realm of motorcycle clubs, the Comanchero stand apart. Founded in Sydney, Australia in 1966, this club has etched its name in the annals of biker history. But what really sets them apart? It's their stringent, unyielding rules that govern every aspect of membership. Rule 1. Being a man. The Comanchero Motorcycle Club is strictly for men. Women can't become official members. However, women still play an important part in the club's social life. These women, often called old ladies, are usually the wives or girlfriends of the club members. They are regularly seen at club events and gatherings, showing their support. Even though they don't have the same status as the male members, their presence is valued and they contribute to the club's community feel. This rule shows how the club balances its traditional male-only membership with the involvement of women in a supportive role. Rule 2. Unanimous Approval Becoming a member of the Comanchero Motorcycle Club is not easy. It's not just about filling out a form or paying a fee. Every single member of the club has to agree to let a new person join. This means that every existing member must vote yes for someone to become part of the club. For those who want to join, known as prospects, there's a big challenge ahead. They need to travel and visit every local group of the club, known as a charter. This journey is really important because it shows how committed and serious they are about joining. It's a way for prospects to prove they are willing to put in the effort and time to be part of the Comanchero family. Rule 3. No ties to law enforcement. The club maintains a strict boundary against those with law enforcement connections. This includes anyone who has abused children or those who have aspired to be police officers or jail guards. Rule 4. Ownership of patches and vests. In the Comanchero Motorcycle Club, the patches and vests members wear are much more than just clothing. They are powerful symbols of loyalty and belonging to the club. Each patch and vest tells a story of commitment and is a badge of honor. These items are so important that they are actually owned by the club, not the individual member. This means if someone leaves the club or breaks the rules, they can't keep their patches and vests. They have to give them back because they represent a deep connection to the club and its values. Rule 5. Respect for Relationships The Comanchero Motorcycle Club takes relationships very seriously. They have a strict rule. No member is allowed to have romantic or sexual relationships with the partners of other members. If someone breaks this rule, the consequences are really serious. This rule is all about respecting each other and maintaining trust within the club. It helps to prevent conflicts and keeps the club's brotherhood strong. But what happens when a member decides to leave the club? How far does the Comanchero go to maintain their code of secrecy and loyalty? The answer might shock you. Rule 6. Code of Silence In the Comanchero Club, keeping secrets is a big deal. Members must never talk about club business with anyone outside the club, especially not with journalists or on social media. This rule of silence is really strict. It's about protecting the club and making sure its private matters stay private. This helps to keep the club's activities and plans away from public eyes and ensures that all members are committed to the club's confidentiality. Rule 7. Prohibition of intravenous drugs. While smoking and drinking are permissible, the club draws a hard line at intravenous drug use. This rule underscores the club's emphasis on loyalty and order. Rule 8. Mandatory attendance. For the Comanchero, showing up is key. Every member must be at all club meetings and events. It's their way of proving loyalty. If someone misses a meeting or an event without a good reason, they have to pay a fine. This rule makes sure that everyone in the club is committed and takes their membership seriously. It's about being there for the club and each other, no matter what. Rule 9. Riding in order. Even the riding formation is governed by rules, reflecting the club's hierarchy. The president leads, 
followed by other ranked members with prospects at the rear. Rule 10, Lifetime Commitment. Joining the Comanchero Motorcycle Club is a forever thing. Once you're in, you're in for life. It's not like joining a club that you can leave whenever you want. This lifelong commitment shows the deep, unbreakable bond between the members. It's a promise that lasts even after a member passes away, showing just how strong and lasting their brotherhood is. Rule 11. No disrespecting club colors. Members must fiercely defend their club colors or patches against any form of disrespect. These symbols are not just fabric, they represent the club's honor and legacy. Rule 12, protection of club property. In the Comanchero Club, protecting what belongs to the club is everyone's job. Whether you're a full member, a nominee, or just starting out as a prospect, you have to look after the club's stuff. This means taking care of the patches, the places where they meet, clubhouses, and anything else the club owns. It's about respecting and safeguarding everything that represents the club, showing that members value and take responsibility for their club's assets. Rule 13. Removal of tattoos for departing members. Leaving the Comanchero is not a simple process. Members who decide to leave must have their club-related tattoos surgically removed, symbolizing a complete severance from the club. Rule 14. Secrecy and Loyalty. Above all, the Comanchero Club takes secrecy very seriously. Every member has to follow the code of silence without exception. They can't talk to reporters or tell anyone outside the club what goes on inside. This rule keeps everything the club does a secret, making sure that their activities and plans are known only to members. It's a big part of showing loyalty to the club and keeping its business private and protected. Rule 15. Prohibition of intravenous drugs. While some forms of substance use are tolerated, the club strictly prohibits the use of intravenous drugs. This rule is in place to ensure members remain focused and loyal to the club's cause. Rule 16. Mandatory weekly meetings. For the Comanchero, their weekly meetings, which they often call church, are a must attend. Every member has to be there. These meetings are really important because they keep everyone in the club on the same page and help maintain order. It's a time when members come together, discuss club matters, and strengthen their bonds. Missing these meetings isn't taken lightly, as they are essential for keeping the club united and disciplined. Rule 17. Fines for absence. The club enforces strict discipline. Members who miss meetings or events without a valid reason are subject to fines, emphasizing the importance of commitment and presence. Rule 18. Riding in order reflecting hierarchy. The club's strict hierarchy is evident even in their riding formations. The president leads, followed by other officers and members, with prospects at the end, ensuring order and unity. Rule 19. No infiltration by law enforcement. The Comanchero are very clear about one thing. No one with a history in law enforcement can join. This means if you've ever worked as a police officer or in any similar role, you can't be part of the club. This rule is super important for keeping the club's activities secret and running smoothly. It's all about trust and making sure that the club stays private, away from the eyes of the law. This way, the club can maintain its own way of life without outside interference. Rule 20, Triumvirate Leadership Structure. The Comanchero Motorcycle Club runs on a unique leadership system called the Triumvirate. This structure includes the presidents of different local groups, called chapters, and a national sergeant at arms. They work together to make big decisions and keep everything under control. This way of organizing things makes sure that the club has strong, centralized leadership. It helps in making important decisions efficiently and ensures that all chapters of the club are aligned and working together towards common goals. The Comanchero Motorcycle Club's rules paint a picture of an organization where loyalty, secrecy, and brotherhood are not just words, but a way of life. These rules are not mere guidelines. They are the pillars that have upheld the club's notorious reputation for decades. But let's circle back to our initial question. 
What happens to those who leave the Comanchero? The process is as intense as their initiation. Members who decide to part ways must undergo a literal erasure of their past, with club-related tattoos surgically removed. This final act of separation is a stark reminder of the club's unyielding nature, a testament to the seriousness of their lifelong commitment. What do you think about such an intense level of dedication? Share your thoughts in the comments below. In the underworld of illegal motorcycle clubs, the Mongols MC is well known for its history of brutal fights with rival gangs. Let's examine the reasons that have contributed to their fearsome reputation. How did the Mongols Motorcycle Club come to be engaged in violent disputes with other motorcycle clubs and law enforcement organizations? And what are the circumstances that led to these conflicts? Let's check it out! The Mongols Motorcycle Club, based in Southern California, reportedly gained a reputation for brutality after displacing the Hells Angels from the Los Angeles region. According to the research, a majority of the Mongols' membership consists of Hispanic males who live in the Los Angeles area, and many are former street gang members with a long history of using violence to settle grievances. According to the source, in order to compete with the Hells Angels for territory and members, the Mongols have formed an alliance with the Bandidos, Outlaws, Sons of Silence, and Pagans. In terms of biker gang violence, the ATF has identified the Mongols as the worst of the worst. Number 5. They will punish members of the team who do not put up a fight. In January of 2004, members of the Bassett Grand Street Gang and the Mongols Motorcycle Club conspired to carry out a drug deal by meeting at a hotel in the state of California. After that, the Mongols were asked to attend a party that was being held by the Bassett Grand Gang. During the party, it was discovered that one of their own had previously been a member of the competing Soreño Gang. One of the Mongols who had previously been a part of the Soreño Gang was subsequently put to death by the Bassett Gang, while another was seriously injured. Two members of the Mongol Motorcycle Club fled the site of the dispute while it was still ongoing. They will be disciplined for their act of cowardice. Number 4. Participation in a Criminal Organization in the course of a criminal and conspiracy investigation, the federal government previously levied a fine of $500,000 on the Mongols Motorcycle Club. The organized criminal enterprise that the violent gang was a part of, according to the prosecutors, included homicide, attempted homicide, and the trafficking of illegal drugs. The members of the club have decided to put up a fight rather than do what the majority of people would do, which is to declare bankruptcy. Interested in knowing why the 2014 tragic shooting is so popular? Let us tell you, it is because of the involvement and heinous deeds of the club's members. But before that, let's discuss one more reason why they are dangerous. Number 3. They have members who are terrifying. Many of the members of the Mongols Motorcycle Club Gang have interesting and unusual backstories, which means that one must approach them with considerable care if one intends to do so at all. The majority of the members come from criminal backgrounds, making them potentially hazardous and difficult to interact with. During the early 1970s, Jesse the Body Ventura was a major member of the gang and went by the alias The Body. He held the position of Sergeant at Arms for the Doggo Chapter. The other members of his group dubbed him Superman because of his imposing stature. In addition to being an actor and a former governor, he has worked as a professional wrestler for the World Wrestling Federation. Number 2. Murders It is imperative that all members of a gang, even those who are part of the Mongol Biker Club, be vigilant at all times. As a consequence of this, players would need to maintain a state of near-constant readiness to deploy their weapons. Even for those who are not directly involved in the conflict, the mistakes that may be made under such extreme pressure can often have disastrous results, comparable to the incident that took place in 2014 when a police officer lost his life while trying to carry out a search warrant at the apartment of a member of the Mongols Motorcycle Club Gang. The moment the door was opened, members of the gang started firing a shotgun at the target. Number 1. They cannot be readily recognized for the crimes they have committed. As a consequence of the fact that the Mongols have been there since the 1960s, they have access to a wide range of contacts and a significant amount of experience carrying out clandestine operations. 
they are able to effectively perform any work without drawing attention to themselves in a way that would create suspicion, since they are very good at keeping a low profile. As a direct result of this characteristic, people generally see them as being very hazardous. Because of its expansive global network, involvement in illegal operations, and vicious in-group competition, the Mongols Motorcycle Club is considered to be the most dangerous outlaw motorcycle gang. Because of their unyielding desire for dominance and their ruthless reputation, they are considered a significant threat inside the criminal underworld. What are your opinions on the Mongols Motorcycle Club? Do let us know your views in the comments below.